Hi there, I'm Ryan, one of the success engineers here at Woopra. In this video, I'll be covering our data loader. So quickly, what is it and what does it do? Well, the data loader allows you to import existing data from various external data sources. We can connect to various SQL databases like MySQL, Postgres, Redshift, and others, and also a growing list of other sources like Salesforce, Stripe, and Zendesk. It allows for complete data integrity, full historical data, and what's great, you don't need to involve your developer. For a complete list of the data sources, check out the link in the video's description. To get started with the data loader, all you need is your database credentials and data with a unique ID such as an email and events with timestamps. So let's go ahead and connect our data source. First, we can find the data loader by clicking on the configuration tab at the top, then on connections, and then hit create connection. Here you can select your integration and enter the appropriate credentials. Once entered, you click Authorize, and Wooper will then establish the connection. One thing to note is that the data loader is read-only, so we never edit or write to your underlying data. If you're receiving any errors, double-check your credentials and permissions for your data source. If your database is behind a private subnet, you may need to whitelist our IP addresses, which I'll link to more info in our video's description. Once you've successfully connected your integration, the next step is to schedule a task. The task is used to configure what data you want to bring into Woopra. For this example, let's say we have some signup data. We'll create a new task called the signup and we'll then select the data source that we connected. Next, we'll select the appropriate table, which is our user contact table. After that's selected, I can choose to bring in identify or track information. Identify information can be any visitor properties such as names, emails, companies, and so on, and track information will be any event data like signups or payments. The sync interval is how often Wooper will check for new data. Just remember that we do send a query each time we check for new data, so be sure to check with your database admins to understand your particular limits and querying costs. Conditions allow you to filter the data you want to bring in. For example, say I want to exclude Wooper employees from the import. What I can do is select our table, where email does not contain, and enter Wooper.com. For the data type, we'll go ahead and select track for our signup event. Next, we want to tell Wooper how to map these events to the correct profiles. Typically, this will either be a user ID or email. We'll go ahead and select the email column from our table and map that to the email visitor property in Woopra. Once selected, we have the option to bring in any visitor properties with the track event. This is useful for any events that have additional visitor properties with it. For example, our signup event includes first name information, so I'll bring that in as an additional visitor property. Next, we'll name the event as signup. Make sure you're using a consistent naming convention when bringing in these events. We suggest using one or two word descriptions that are clear to other users. Things like submit form, make payment, or simply sign up. This makes it a lot easier for other users to determine what the event is. Next, we have our action properties. We'll want to bring in both our sign up date, and I'll also add in our date modified. Since a timestamp is required for importing actions, we'll again use the signup date. And lastly, we can select the cursor. You can think of the cursor as a bookmark for your data that's placed when the task completes. Once the task starts again after the set sync interval, it'll use the cursor as a starting point to retrieve new data. Typically, the cursor will be a unique incrementally generated ID, a timestamp, or any unique or sequential column. I'll go ahead and again select our signup date. Now that everything is entered, we can first save and then preview the task. The preview allows us to take a look at the data before it's imported. It's important to double check to make sure this is the correct information you want to bring in. Be aware that importing certain data can cause profiles to merge and this cannot be undone. So once you're confident that everything looks good, you can go ahead and activate the task. The initial sync can take some time to load, so don't worry if you're not seeing data right away. Great, so let's take a look at one last feature of the data loader. Often the data you want can be spread across multiple tables. For example, say we want to bring in some events when a user adds a website. However, the data we need is stored across multiple tables in our database. 
Whooper makes it easy to join these tables to pull in the correct information. Typically, you'll join using a many-to-one relationship. In our case, our organizations can have many websites associated with them, so we'll join the websites table to the organizations table. I can define how these tables should join by simply choosing the related columns. I selected the websites table organization ID field to join with the organization table ID field. And now I can configure the rest of the task. I'll go ahead and map the database org ID to the Whooper visitor property org ID. Next, I'll set the action and the associated properties. You'll notice that I'm now easily able to pull in properties from multiple tables to use in a single event. And if you're looking for more information on joining tables, be sure to check out the links in our video's description. So I hope now you can see that using the data loader is a simple and effective way to bring in your data for instant analysis. And if you have any questions, please contact us at support at Thanks.